One of the first videos that I uploaded to this channel was a review of the original Leica Q that came out back in 2015. Ever since, it has been my favorite digital camera for street photography and it convinced me that 28mm is the better focal length for what I am doing and I couldn't be happier with that choice. Then in 2019 Leica announced the Q2 and honestly I couldn't convince myself to upgrade because my original Q worked just fine and the new one simply wasn't worth it for me. Then in November last year Leica came up with the Q2 monochrome which took me by surprise and honestly I was a little bit intrigued. So when my friend told me that he picked up a Q2 monochrome I couldn't resist so I traveled to Berlin to meet him and of course borrowed the camera for a day and of course as you might remember, I made a first impressions video talking about uh, the Q2 monochrome and yeah, after that I couldn't resist and I picked up my own Q2 monochrome. So in today's video I want to give you my experience shooting the Leica Q2 monochrome for almost a year. I took the camera to Mexico and also to Russia to film a bunch of episodes you might remember and it's not so much, it's a kind of a review, but not so much in terms of technical details, just my user experience shooting the camera for pretty much one year. Now the question is, why a pure monochrome camera, you might say? <laughs> the thing is, there will be a random comment down below asking exactly that question and um, because this camera will not allow you to shoot color and it costs even more, so it does make sense to buy it, right? Maybe, but developing a sensor like this costs money and there will be less people buying it. Obviously, it has to be more expensive, right? So if Fuji would make an X100V with a sensor like this, 100% it will be more expensive or would be more expensive than the regular one. And if you see that Leica has now four cameras that shoot only black and white, that means people are liking this concept and people are buying it. Otherwise, there wouldn't be so many cameras that can only shoot black and white because otherwise Leica would be really stupid and lose a lot of money. So if you see it from this perspective, a camera like this totally makes sense. The Q with the fixed lens is already a limitation and why would you add another one by stripping away the ability to shoot color, right? Well, I think even though it seems limiting, but at the same time it makes life a little bit easier and here's why. There's already a lot of people out there that love to shoot prime lenses and some shooters stick to one focal length because then it becomes second nature. Yes, by taking away the option of color, you might miss out on some moments that might work better in color, but is it a problem? No, because when shooting street photography, you will miss moments anyway and there will always be another one just around the corner. Back in the film days, there were people dedicated only to black and white and even nowadays there's people that want to shoot only black and white. And for those people, it totally makes sense to get a camera like this. And even if you shoot only black and white from time to time, and you don't mind the money, it might also make sense because if you go out with this camera and shoot, you're absolutely de dedicated to black and white. There's no room, you can shoot color. And the thing is, if you have the regular Q and you might come home back with like two or 300 images and I'm 100% sure there will be an image where I think, ah, I'm not sure if I should convert this to black and white. Maybe I should uh, set it to color. And that, that's the thing. If you go out with a pure monochrome camera, you will be looking for moments that suit black and white and you will not second guessing your decision. And I think that's the biggest point for a camera like this and also high ISO because as you might have seen in my videos, this thing is a low light monster and I would say it's probably like two stops better than the regular Q, maybe even more. And that's absolutely insane. Now let's quickly talk about the build quality of the camera. Uh, it's what you would expect, it's a Leica, so it's built like a tank. Uh, and in the end, it's a regular Q2 with some minor changes, uh, has a different sensor and that's basically it and some cosmetic changes, but they don't matter that much. Um, coming from the original Q, 
I can say there are some improvements. There's less buttons on the back, which is great. And also the on off switch is way better. There's no comparison. And one thing I've noticed about this camera, which is pretty crazy, it's the battery life. Because I can go out with one battery um, in the daytime and I can pretty, pretty much shoot the whole day with one battery. I don't know if this is true also for the regular Q, but for the Q2 Monochrome, I can say one or two batteries is pretty much all you need. And that is absolutely great. Now let's talk about one thing that a lot of you might be interested in and that is image quality. The Q2 is already no slouch when it comes to image quality, but the Q2 Monochrome takes it even up a notch. Already when shooting wide open at f1.7, that 28mm lens will give you some outstanding results and it's hard to believe when you zoom in to 100%. The lack of a color array will result in very crisp images and you could probably have some huge prints made of the files with great quality. High ISO is one major strong suit of the camera and just simply look at these files and you'll know what I mean. Take this image for instance. Uh, in this case, I was shooting at ISO 25,000, which, which is already pretty crazy. And with my own eyes, it looked way darker than in this image, which is absolutely crazy. But you know what the best part about this image is? It was underexposed. So in the end, I had to bring up the overall exposure by 1.8 stops. And even then, the file looks pretty nice to be honest uh, there's nothing to complain here and if you're wondering how it looks like natively without uh, adjusting the exposure see the detail is pretty nice there's not much noise it's absolutely mental there's one thing you have to keep in mind when shooting a monochrome camera and that is that there because there's no color array you have to be careful not to clip the highlights because if you do there's almost nothing to recover on the other side when bumping up the shadows later on in post there's so much detail to gain out of the shadows it's almost unbelievable so that makes up for the lack of detail that you can recover in the highlights very easily when you convert a color image to black and white you can play with the color channels um, to determine how your image will look on a regular camera no problem but on this one because it's a pure monochrome sensor there's no color channels so you cannot do this and it's similar to back in the film days when when people were shooting uh, different film stocks and of course you could change your film stock to have a different black and white image but also what they did was using one of these here like color filters and they have a big impact on how your image will look like and I got really lucky because I picked up these high quality filters on eBay for like 40 euros or something. I think regu the regular price of one of these is each is 50. So I got really lucky. And back when I was in Mexico, I uh, had a portrait shoot with a model on the beach and I used the orange, the yellow and the red filter just to give you an idea how this will affect your image. Here it's uh, much more visible what kind of effect the filter has. The orange filter already and especially the red filter. The sky gets way darker, the skin tones get way brighter so and it looks overall way more dramatic. Don't fall. <laughs> yeah, awesome, awesome, great, great. Oh yeah. Also here you can see it, um, the leaves they get brighter and also the skin tones and the background a little bit darker. Yeah, sometimes the life of the model is not that easy and you have to fight the elements. Can happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. great.
Sure, this camera has a lot of upsides, but there must be something negative about it, right? Because let's face it, there's no camera that is perfect. And also this camera has some issues. Some got addressed already, but let me quickly talk you through the issues that I had. One thing that came up very quickly is, um, and I've noticed that, and I've got some messages from some of you <laughs> that had the same problem was, um, there were some white dots in, especially when you shot high ISO or some dead pixels. And so I asked my friend Alika about this and he said, oh, don't worry, there will be a firmware update coming and they will address this. And after a couple of months they did, uh, I applied the firmware update and the issue is now gone. There was another problem that occurred um, and especially I've noticed that in when I was in Mexico. I was walking around, I saw this amazing moment, then I brought the camera up to my eye, pressed the shutter and the problem was I wasn't really taking photos because I was shooting video. <laughs> and how did that happen? I have no idea. What I did was the camera was hanging around my neck and for some reason the camera switched over to uh, video mode and I was asking myself, how is this possible? And I think um, one explanation that I have is uh, because you can use gestures on the, on the screen and for some reason probably that gesture switched the camera over to a video mode. Um, which is super annoying and some of the Q2 users had the same issue. So it's not just the Q2 monochrome, it's also the Q. But after coming back from Mexico, I added this half case uh, to my camera and ever since the problem never occurred again. So I think with the half case, there's a little bit more room between my body basically and the camera and the, the display. So it's not switching the camera over into a video mode. Thanks God, because that was really annoying, but if you have the same issue, maybe get the half case and this problem hopefully is also gone for you. So two of my main issues I had with the camera got resolved. One with a firmware update, the other, other one just uh, by coincidence. But there's another thing that bothers me about this camera and it's if you shoot in burst mode. If you don't want to shoot single photo, you want to shoot in burst mode and you use autofocus. What the camera will do is it will focus in between shots. And the auto, auto focusing system in the camera is fine, but continuous focus doesn't really work that well because it's just contrast autofocus. It's not that great like on the Sony that's filming me right now. So that's really annoying because if I want to have continuous focus, I would just set it to continuous focus. But if I'm in single focus, why is it focusing between shots? That doesn't make any sense at all. The only thing to solve this issue is if you, um, maybe use back, back button focus, which I don't want to really use, and or you go to manual focus, then you don't have the issue. But if you want to use autofocus, especially maybe in low light environments where the autofocus is probably quicker than you can focus manually with this one, especially when shooting wide open at f1.7, this can be an issue. And I hope that Leica will address this in a firmware update and fix that finally, because it's really annoying. Just to demonstrate what happens, the camera is set to medium, continuous shooting and autofocus is set to AFS. And when I hold down the button and I bring something in front of the autofocus field, the focus will shift. And in the resulting images, you can clearly see how the focus is shifting in between. Now you might ask yourself, is the Q2 monochrome worth it? Especially the price tag, it's not a cheap camera by any means. And I can only speak for myself. For me personally, I think it's, it was totally worth it. I've been using the camera since almost a year and I had good fun, I had amazing results with this and I'm totally fine with this only shooting black and white. So for me personally, yes, absolutely worth it. If you like black and white and you don't mind the price tag on this camera, you should get it. If you want to have it, just get it. Um, another thing that comes up a lot is, should you get this or the M10 monochrome? And that is a question I might be able to answer for you because if you shoot 28 or 35, if this is your main focal length uh, in between those, then, and you want to shoot black and white, of course, then I think this might be worth it over the M10 because it's more convenient to shoot because you have a preview in the viewfinder, you see how your image will look like. Um, and I think that makes sense. It's much more convenient to use it in street photography. It's more discreet. It's super quiet. It's much faster than shooting with the with any M. So I think if that's what you do mainly, maybe street photography, 
28, 35 and you want to shoot black and white, you should maybe consider this. I think it might be the better option. Of course, if you want to switch lenses uh, and that's very important to you, then you shouldn't get this because then it does make sense. Other than that, get it. It's an awesome camera, highly recommend it. All right, guys, other than recommending this camera, I can recommend highly to subscribe to my channel because there will be more videos coming with the QT Monochrome because I went back to Russia to film more episodes with also use this camera. And yeah, as always, guys, if you like this video, give a thumbs up. Check out my street photography scenes because this will help me out to make more videos like this in the future. And as always, guys, see you in the next one. Until then, auf Wiedersehen.